Okay, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online. We are dealing with the different causes of emotional scars and the times we're living in now. Yes, Satan has turned up his flames to attack God's people with more vehement treachery. Hmm. All right. This is 2 Peter chapter 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false prophets among you, who privily, which means privately or secretly, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, their destructive ways, that's what that means, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words, which means hypocrisy, will make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelleth among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds." The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Okay, so I'm going to stop there real quick. But see, what ends up happening is we end up living in a time where God is trying to show us that it's not just us, it's not just our flesh, it also comes from attacks. But even through the attacks, we have to be careful. We have to be careful how we carry ourselves in these last days. Have you ever noticed in uh, rocket ships, please anoint father. Have you ever seen in rocket ships how they can uh, adjust the amount of gravity? They can lighten the gravity. They can enhance the gravity. And the stronger gravity, the, the stronger the pull of gravity is, the heavier you feel the quicker things fall to the ground. You can drop something, and I want to drop something that won't break. So let's see, what can I drop? I can drop this piece of plastic. Okay, but if gravity is a lot stronger, when I drop it, it'll go down suddenly, boom, like a bullet, because gravity is stronger. Well, in these last days, you have to see the pull of the flesh the pull of darkness as a heavier weight of gravity. It's heavier than it's ever been. It's stronger than it's ever been. But it cannot surpass the strength of God and his power. So when you are dealing with that level of strength pulling against you, you have to press that much harder, resist that much harder. We have not resisted unto blood, as the Bible says but we must resist uh, that much harder. And sometimes what we are resisting more than we resist the devil is ourselves. We have to resist ourselves because we are functioning, or shall I say, dysfunctioning because 
of the wounds and the scars that have been placed on us. It doesn't create an excuse. It doesn't make a way of escape where we can uh, rationalize why we do the dumb things we do, why we do the wrong things we do. But we have to acknowledge the fact that there is fragmentation going on inside. There is a problem within. And when there's a problem within, it seeps. It seeps without. It brings, it brings our problems to the light through our actions, through our words, our insecurities show through our attitudes, our fear shows through our secrecy. We are, we live in fear. We live in paranoia. We live in guilt. We live in secrecy. We live in attitude, in anger, bitterness. All of that is the pull against our flesh. We live in resentment, unforgiveness. We live intimidated, worrying about what people think about us, worrying about how do I look? We, we have all these issues to fight with. Why? Because we are insecure. Where did the insecurity come from? It was piled on us, coming through our mother's womb. The, 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 the demons were waiting there, waiting to pounce on God's chosen. They were there to pounce on anybody. But I think there's a mark on the people of God who are predestined to serve him. I really believe that. And those are the ones who come under severe attacks from the gate, coming out the gate, busting through that womb. There are divine, I mean, not divine, satanic, supernatural uh, um, assignments against us. And knowing that, we have to be very, very careful once we come into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we begin to understand the workings of the supernatural, the workings of darkness and the workings of God and all, we have to become more and more watchful. We have to become more self-aware. We have to become more honest because it's in your honesty, in your honesty, that the help comes. You cannot shed light in a room where you will not allow a light bulb to shine. If you have no light bulb, you can have all the power in the world, but there will be no light. If you have no candle, no light bulb, no fire, no igniting of anything, there will be no light. You have to be willing to shine the light on your own darkness. If you're not willing to shine the light on your own darkness, there is a problem deep down within. You cannot live under the cloak of secrecy because God's word says what is in the dark will all manifest into the light. Nothing is hidden from him. Nothing. You may hide from people. You may fool people, but God knows all. And the only way you're going to get that inner healing, you got to get before the doctor, take your clothes off. The great physician, take your clothes off. Get buck naked, strip down, baby. Let it all hang out. The good, bad, and the ugly, you got to let it all hang out. And if that doctor is going to conduct a surgical procedure on your emotions, you have got to bear your soul. Throw the cloak in the garbage can. You don't need it. And you don't need the pride that makes you want to hide. That's not of God. You can't live a lie and get healed. You can't slip and slide and get healed. 
You can't resent and hate and get healed. The two are diametrically opposed. The twain shall never meet. So you have to become one with the truth. <laughs> yeah, new age statement, I know. I'm just being a little over dramatic and poetic. You have to become one with the truth. You have to be real down to your core. You have to be willing to call a spade a spade, call an apple an apple. You hear me? Call a lie a lie. Call a sin a sin. Don't call a sin a mistake. Don't call a sin a hang up. It's a sin. Now you have to go to God and say, Lord, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep saying things like that to people, hurting their feelings? Why am I so defensive? Why is my temper so short? What's wrong with me, Lord? Show me. Tell me. Help me understand. And deliver and heal me, Lord. I haven't forgiven them. Is that what it is? Do I still resent them? When they walk in the room, I get a knot in my throat and a lump in my gut. What is it? Is it unforgiveness combined with the hurt? Hmm. You need to go to God with that. Take your clothes off. Strip down where there's nothing to hide behind. There's no pride to hide behind. There's no mask to hide behind. Get rid of all your costumes. You don't need them if you're going to get healed. You don't go into the surgery room with your Halloween costume and your mask on. You don't go in there with your makeup and your wig and all the stuff, your fake teeth and all. You don't go in with that. You may have, the, excuse me, you may have the world fooled. You may have everybody fooled. But you know you're not fooled. You know what the real deal is. And you know God's not fooled, even if you go for your own okie doke. So if you really, really, really want healing, really want healing, you've got to be willing to let it all hang out, baby. There are some of you, and I'm not just talking to our group at God's Church of Love online. I'm talking to you on YouTube, across the, the globe, and all around the world, and across the country. Some of you are so angry at God. Some of you have questions you've never asked God because some dummy said, don't question God. You better question God. God says in Isaiah chapter 1, come now, let us reason together. Come on, let's work this thing out. Let's work this equation out together. That means question and answer time, y'all. So yes, you need to ask questions. God may tell you you're jealous of somebody. God may tell you you never forgave so-and-so. God may tell you you're very judgmental. God may tell you you're living a lie. God may tell you you're using somebody that you've been proclaiming love to. I love you, I love you, I love you. And God said, no, you don't. You don't know what love is. You only love them as long as they're serving your purpose. You're using them. You're a user. You'd be shocked at the truth God will tell you if you open your ears and are willing to listen to reality. Now, you may get mad at him, and that's okay to tell him that too. God knows we get mad at them. Kids get mad at their parents when they get that little woodshed whooping or they're grounded for doing something wrong they knew was wrong. But the bottom line is you still submit. And if you're not willing, say, Lord, make me willing to be willing. I mean, do whatever you got to do. That's if you really mean it. 
But you've got to fight harder in these last days because the gravity pull of darkness, Satan, and the flesh is going to do everything it can to pull you down, to weigh you down, to tie you down, to bring you down. Don't let it. Don't let it. You are a child of the Most High King. You have a right to be healed. You don't deserve to walk around in bondage, chains, and a, a, a ball and chain around your neck, a sack of sorrow on your back. You don't have to walk around living like that. That's not the abundant life God promised us. But before we get to the abundant life, we must deal with the enemy. Every enemy of our soul, our mind, our emotions, our heart, our psyche, our bodies, we must deal with the enemy and we must drive it out at all costs. Drive out the enemy. You can't pussyfoot. Can't go out to lunch with the enemy when it's convenient. Can't lay down and roll in the hay with the enemy when it's convenient. Do not warm yourself by the devil's fire so you can be comfortable. Sometimes obeying God will make you so uncomfortable you get angry at him while you're doing it. But do it anyway. You'll be shocked how quickly you can be healed. If you give it all to God, First, you must bear your soul. Then you must be honest. Just buck naked honest. And then when you get through being honest, you have to surrender it all. Surrender all your rights. Surrender all of your knowledge and all of your wisdom and all of the things you think you earned the right to have. All your expertise. Come to God as an idiot. Lord, teach me as if I'm a brand new baby. That's why he says, come as a child. You'd be surprised how much you don't know until God begins to show you what he knows. And he begins to teach you. Oh my goodness, I had no idea. Yeah, that's why it pays to ask God because he knows it all. That's one that knows it all. You don't. So if you really, really, really want to get healing from God, mm -hmm, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And if you believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, you will obey till it hurts. You will cry out to God till you get your breakthrough. You will scratch and dig and claw and climb and press through whatever you got to press through. And if you don't have that determination in your soul because something has weakened your resolve and broken you down on the inner man, go to God and ask him to give you a new resolve. Ask him to put some steel in that backbone. And you watched your change begin to unfold. And then people will look at you and say, mm, this that was once a desolate, barren land has now become like the Garden of Eden. Whoa. How beautiful. Look at the change. Is this so-and-so? That's really them. Wow. I wouldn't have known it if I hadn't seen it. And then you give glory to God. Don't take the credit, baby. All right. I'm going to stop there. If we're going to deal with inner healing. We're going to deal with wounds. I want you to get pens and papers. I want you to write down some of the areas you know you're struggling. You don't have to tell your business to us. We can't do a doggone thing for you. But write it down and acknowledge 
And if you don't want anybody to see it, tear that paper up, throw it in the trash when this meeting is over. But write down what your issue is. Hate, jealousy, insecurity, paranoia, fear, intimidation, lust, anger, violence, murder in the heart. Some folks you would love to see dead. You'd love to help them get dead too. <laughs> yeah. Angry, anger with God. You may have resentment towards God. Write it all down. He's not surprised. You might be, but he's not. He's seen it from the gate. He saw it when you didn't know it was there. All right. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would help us in this meeting to repossess our land. Help us to drive out the enemy because there will come a day when we will be able to sit back and enjoy 40 years, spiritually speaking, of peace. But I ask you, Father, to give us what we need some people don't know how to fight because the fight's been beaten out of them. But you can put the fight back in there through your healing. And I ask you to do that for us, Lord. Help each and every one of us. You know where we all fall short. I sure know some of the areas I do and some areas I don't know till you show me. Show us, Lord, so we can grow. I want to reach my fullest potential. I don't want to half step. And I pray the same for all of us online together and those listening on YouTube. In the name of Jesus, Father, help us. Help us have a do or die attitude towards growth, inner healing, repossessing our lives and relinquishing all of our rights to you. Because we say out loud, I surrender all in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys.